ਅੱਜ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਕੋਲੰਬੀਆ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਡੇਵਿਡ ਐਬੀ ਉਹ ਸਟੂਡੀਓ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੌਜੂਦ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਕੋਲੰਬੀਆ ਦੀ ਮੌਜੂਦਾ ਸਿਆਸਤ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਹੁਣ ਕੀ ਮਾਹੌਲ ਆ ਸੂਬੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਮੁੱਦਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਆਧਾਰਤ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਹੁਣ ਅਗਲੀਆਂ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਤਿਆਰੀ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਅਕਤੂਬਰ 19 ਨੂੰ ਹੋਣ ਜਾ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਬਿਚੀ ਸੂਬੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਇੱਕ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਸਰੀ ਸ਼ਹਿਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਸਰੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੱਡੀ ਆਬਾਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆ ਪੰਜਾਬੀਆਂ ਦੀ ਹੈ ਕੁਝ ਸਰੀ ਦੇ ਮੁੱਦਿਆਂ ਤੇ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਕੁਝ ਉਹ ਮੁੱਦੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਪਿਛਲੀਆਂ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨਸ ਲੜੀਆਂ ਗਈਆਂ ਤੇ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਲੜਿੰਦਾ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਤੋਂ ਮੇਨ ਗੱਲ ਹੋਏਗੀ ਕਿ ਫਾਈਨਲ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਲੈਜਿਸਲੇਟਿਵ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਸੀਗਾ ਉਹ ਹਾਲ ਹੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਮਾਪਤ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੋ ਕਿੱਦਾਂ ਦਾ ਡੇਵਿਡ ਏਬੀ ਹੁਣਾਂ ਦਾ ਕਾਰਜਕਾਲ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਲੀਡਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਪਹਿਲੀਆਂ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੋਣਗੀਆਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਉਹ ਲੜਨਗੇ ਸੋ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੇ ਅਜੇ ਵਾਕਫੀਅਤ ਵੀ ਕਰਨੀ ਉਸ ਢੰਗ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਤੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੇ ਕੁਝ ਮੁੱਦਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਕਨਸਰਨਸ ਸਵਾਲ ਵੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਪਿਛਲੇ ਸਮਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਝ ਆਏ ਪਿਛਲੀਆਂ ਲੀਡਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊਜ਼ ਦੇ ਦੌਰਾਨ ਸੋ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਇੱਕ ਕਰਕੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਪੁੱਛਾਂਗੇ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਦਾ ਆਪਾਂ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਅੱਗੇ ਤੋਰਦੇ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਡੇਵਿਡ ਏਬੀ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਆਈ ਮਿਸ ਯੂ ਟੀਵੀ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਗਲੈਡ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਯੂ ਹੀਅਰ ਥੈਂਕਸ ਫਾਰ ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਯਾ ਹਾਊ ਆਰ ਯੂ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਸਰ ਆਮ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਆਮ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਆਮ ਗਲੈਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੋਮ ਵੀ ਹੈਡ ਅ ਲੌਂਗ ਲੈਜਿਸਲੇਟਿਵ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਇਟਸ ਨਾਈਸ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਬੈਕ ਯਾ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਅ ਹਿਸਟੋਰੀਕਲ ਮੂਮੈਂਟ ਫੋਰ ਆਲ ਦੀ ਐਮਐਲਏਜ਼ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਫੋਰ ਯੂਰ ਸੈਲਫ ਐਜ਼ ਵੈਲ ਬੀਂਗ ਇਲੈਕਟਿਡ ਐਜ਼ ਅਨ ਐਮਐਲਏ ਬੀਂਗ ਇਨਟੂ ਦ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਨਾਓ ਐਂਡਿੰਗ ਅਪ ਦ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਊ ਵਾਸ ਥਿਸ ਜਰਨੀ ਫੋਰ ਯੂ ਸਰ uh it's been a, it's been a wild ride it's been about 10 years in politics since i was yeah. first elected every day is an honor it's an incredible opportunity to serve people and i uh i'm very grateful for it and we also had uh, in the session a lot of my colleagues who have mm-hmm. run for a long time and represented yeah. their communities retiring uh and making space for new people to come forward so uh, on all sides of the house uh, both the opposition and on uh, the government benches so uh it's a, it is a, an important time as we start to look towards october when the general election will be held yeah uh, till date it's been one and a half year as we have been seeing you as the premier mm-hmm. for the british columbia uh, so uh, it wasn't a planned thing obviously for you it was totally unplanned things happened with mr john horgan and then you came into charge what were the challenges you were facing at the time you came into power you became the leader how how, how was that change for you at the time well it was a you're right it was a it was a big shift and john was uh was uh, stepping back because mm. of his fight with cancer and happily he's cancer free now yeah. he's working as ambassador in germany he's enjoying yeah. that uh but for me you know I'm a, I'm a new leader people maybe knew some of the things that I had done with ICBC or on housing uh but they didn't know me in that different role so mm-hmm. it was an introduction of myself to British Columbians and also uh for my colleagues that I work with uh introducing myself in a different role uh with them as well um so I'm really proud how we held together tight as a group uh we can see on the other side of the legislature uh, the other parties really struggling what what do they stand for who are their leaders going to be mm. uh what what are the offers they're putting forward to british columbians for us we we've, we've managed to hold together very tight uh and get some important things done for british columbians on housing on healthcare uh, new family doctors so uh making sure that that they have the support that they need to be successful in our province you you like just mentioned icbc and other things at the time you made the amendment so the changes what overall things you think what are the bills that have been passed during this tenure and what are the amendments made and what difference you think those uh, amendments or the bills going to bring into the life of the british columbians well i think you know if there's one area that i that is so connected to so many other challenges that we face in the province it's the issue of housing You know, it's hard to grow a business if you can't find the workers, they can't afford to live uh where the jobs are. Uh it's hard to picture as a young person how you're going to build your life if you don't know if you're going to be able to own a home or raise a family as a senior, whether you're going to be able to retire and find a place you can afford. So the the piece of work that I'm really um happy about with the direction that we're going, uh
Well, then, last week, uh, uh, your viewers may have had some insight into uh, yeah. politics. Uh, the mask slipped a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the backroom deals that we're used to with the BC Liberals, they both sat around those tables. Uh, rich consultants trying to get them back together, former politicians coming out of uh, retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it was a very unusual week last week. Mm -hmm. uh, and for us, it's just about staying focused on uh, what's important for British Columbians. Uh, are we building out the healthcare system, the education system, addressing the housing issues? And that's where we're going to stay focused. Yes. For the others, they're, uh, they're trying to figure out which, which way uh, is forward. Yeah, but, but as you just mentioned, let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, seeing Mr. Kevin Falcon and, Mr. and seeing the BC United, uh, they were your opposition party, but right now, the position they are having right now, the polls we are seeing, how do you see BC United now? Yeah, so uh, uh, we're seeing a lot of different polls mm -hmm. that say a lot of different things. Um, they are consistent, though, in showing uh, uh, the NDP uh, in the lead, which I'm glad for. Mm -hmm. uh, it's helpful for us for recruiting candidates across the province. It's very useful for that. But for me, I know uh, I was around in 2013. Mm -hmm. The polls uh, don't matter. All that matters is Election Day. Mm. And so that's the poll that we're focused on, mm. uh, is making sure we're showing British Columbians where we're going, how we're going to address these issues. And then uh, for the other parties, we're seeing big shifts back and forth between the Conservatives and, and the BCUPs, uh, Kevin Falcon's party, John Rustad's party. And I think my job, the job of my colleagues in the election, will be to show uh, British Columbians, help them uh, see the proposals that are being put forward by these parties, the impacts that they're going to have. So. You know, south of the Fraser, here's the fastest growing area in Canada uh, that needs transit, mm -hmm. uh, SkyTrain, hospitals, schools, uh, and with the budget cuts that uh, Mr. Rustad and Mr. Falcon are proposing, they're going to be cancelling those projects, they're going to be firing those workers that we need. Uh, and, you know, Mr. Fal Mr. Rustad's first proposal for schools was that we're going to have more students uh, in a classroom with a single teacher. That's how mm. he's going to go after education. So, you know, uh, people um, will have the opportunity to weigh in on which vision they support for British Columbians. I just hope they're not sitting in traffic with overcrowded schools and lineups uh, for hospitals that should have been expanded but were cancelled. Uh, our vision is uh, that we need to build this province right now, and that's what we're, that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. How do you see the Conservatives' graph going up? They have came a lot way uh, with the polls. As you see, the, uh, the election day, uh, like any home matters, but still these polls, sometimes the people on the fence who, have, who are like, like undecided voters, sometimes they, get, uh, they see these polls and they make their minds. And how you see this Conservatives' graph going up? Do you think like who's your going to be competitor before it was BC Liberals? Do you see as a second competitor BC Conservatives this time? Yeah, I think, you know, for those of us that are day in, day out in politics, hmm. um, we, uh, this, is, this is everything. But I think for most people, they're just living their lives, they're doing hmm. what they do, and they're going to look up from their busy lives in the lead up to the election. And they're going to say, who's putting forward the best proposal for me and my family and for where we need to go? Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and there's a significant group of those people that are not decided yet. They don't know how they're going to vote. And, uh, and for that group, it's going to be critical that we put together our, our best proposal. Uh, we haven't heard yet. Uh, the Conservatives are quite a new party mm. uh, about significant initiatives that they have to deal with the issues that we face. What we have heard is concerning. So, you know, opposing the rebate for drivers on ICBC mm. and not standing up for drivers, but standing up for personal injury lawyers who made a lot of money under ICBC. It wasn't their fault. That's just how the rules work. But it was costing drivers huge increases every year. John Rustad wants to bring back the old system at ICBC. It doesn't make any sense. And so uh, as they put forward their proposals, it'll be important for them to explain uh, as is our job as well to voters, how they're trying to make life better. I don't understand how these conservative proposals make life better, mm -hmm. but that will be uh, more important than any poll yeah. uh, as we get into the election. And right now we're sitting in Surrey. So uh, there are, this is the second most growing city, uh, and it's going to be the first one within a few years. We're looking for that. And how do you see the Surrey especially? What is Surrey to you? Well, for me, on, on swearing in, one of the things that I really wanted to address mm -hmm. south of the Fraser was the, the chronic discrimination in uh, what uh, in government we call capital. And it's just those, uh, those, that critical infrastructure, the schools and the hospitals and the other things that make life uh, more livable in a community. So, for example, in the last four years under the last government, there was only one school expansion done. Uh, we now have a $4.2 billion capital budget for new schools more than 13,000 student spaces in Surrey. And we're trying to keep up with the massive growth we're seeing in the community. The Surrey-Langley SkyTrain, 
the first medical, new medical school in a generation in Western Canada that's going to be in Surrey at SFU. Uh, the new uh, patient tower at Surrey Memorial Hospital and the new hospital under construction. Making sure that uh, we're recognizing that this community uh, was not supported when John Rustad and Kevin Falcon sat around the cabinet table, but they are now. And that we can show people in a meaningful way that we're addressing the concerns that Surrey residents have that they were overlooked for too long. Uh, Mr. Deby, when we see the issues for the British Columbians facing, I think the topmost issue, as you also mentioned before, is a health issue. Mm. Uh, we in Surrey, we are facing a big, uh, big, big problem regarding uh, the hospitals, uh, regarding the surgeries, the long waiting times, uh, the family doctor shortage we are facing. Uh, it's uh, one of the biggest cities, many immigrants coming up here, but not much infrastructure we are seeing uh, related to the schools and other things. When it comes to hospital, it's been many elections that have been fought on this issue. And lately, uh, many times, uh, like whenever the elections come up, people have been talking about this. Uh, even you, your government 2017 election promised about the new hospital in Surrey. And then uh, recently, uh, a uh, statement was made regarding a second tower. But when the, uh, like in the recent budget, we don't see any funds coming up for for the hospital or for the second tower? What do you want to say about that? Yes, so the money is there for the second tower mm -hmm. uh, because of the timing of the announcement mm -hmm. after the print date for the budget. Uh, it was not there, but the money is there for mm -hmm. the tower at uh, Surin Memorial. For the new hospital, it's under construction. And look, I get it. You know, this is a community that was promised these things so many times, mm -hmm. and then the land was sold for the hospital instead of the hospital being built. And the uh, community was not prioritized for these. So people are skeptical until they're walking in the door and getting treatment in the new hospital. People are going to be, I'm not sure if it's actually going to happen. I understand why. Um, but we are doing these things. They're under construction. The money is there. We're building the tower. And we know that uh, for today, it's going to be a few years before these places open. And mm -hmm. so what are we doing today for people in Surrey? 70 new doctors at Surrey Memorial Hospital. Uh, about 200 new health workers in the hospital as well to help take some of the pressure off. For family doctors, a new deal with family doctors that's brought 700 family doctors from doing uh, short-term clinic work, drop-in clinic work, to those long-term family doctor uh, relationships that people are looking for with their family. Mm. Uh, we've had uh, almost 400,000 people now that have connected uh, with a family doctor that are now uh, uh, in a relationship with a family doctor uh, and more to come. And so we're moving forward on all these different issues that are a priority for people in Surrey, south of the Fraser, right up the valley, uh, and right across the province, actually. And these are very deep problems that aren't solved overnight. Right across Canada, mm -hmm. governments are dealing with these. But the kind of numbers we're posting around new nurses, new family doctors, new physicians generally, internationally credentialed doctors and nurses are better than other provinces right across the country. And we have to keep doing that to make sure that we're addressing this issue because our population is growing and those health professionals that we need, um, we need to be the most attractive place for them to work because we're in an international competition for them. Mm. Uh, but many of the city people, when we talk to the people, sometimes they feel they're being ignored, uh, whatever the reasons can be, because every time they compare themselves to like Vancouver, mm -hmm. seeing the population, they see there are so many hospitals there, three they have, yes. we just got one, and it's, it's actually the time, because when we go to the hospitals, we see people are crying there sitting on the floors, waiting time is uh, like way big. Uh, sometimes even the, uh, some incidents happens, ladies even give birth out of, right outside in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Even some of them give birth uh, to the new childs in the cars. That's kind of a trauma uh, some people are getting into. And it's kind of really serious issue when people want this to be solved as soon as possible. So people really are looking forward for this. Absolutely. And you know, this is not a problem that came up overnight. Yeah. Um, but there are pieces that we're putting in place to respond to the big challenges. And just to put it in perspective for your viewers, we're talking about 10,000 people every 37 days mm. that are moving to British Columbia mm. from other provinces, from other countries. The majority of those people are locating in Surrey yeah. and in the Fraser Valley. Yeah. So the scale of the population growth is remarkable. But a lot of this was foreseeable by the previous governments. And they didn't uh, move to build this infrastructure in, the, in Surrey or in the Valley. And we are doing those things. But we're also working with the doctors and nurses at Surrey Memorial to say, what can we do? What are the pieces we can put in place right now? Mm -hmm. How can we take some of the pressure off? Mm -hmm. um, it is a really major challenge. And it's not just in Surrey. 
It's right across the country in terms of the demand for medical professionals, hmm. but it's particularly acute in Surrey because Surrey was discriminated against in terms of they did not get the capital investment that other parts of the city uh, that other cities saw. Hmm. You know, when the, when the, when John Rustad and Kevin Falcon sat around the table, they decided that Surrey would get one uh, school expansion in the last four years of the government, and and Vancouver did not see that. Uh, when uh, the expansions of hospitals in Vancouver were done, uh, they were not done in Surrey. And in fact, the land for the hospital was sold. And if they get back into power, they'll do it again. Because they were great at making announcements, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. They never broke ground. And so uh, these, this is an important record for people to know. And I understand the frustration. Uh, that's why we're moving so urgently to address these issues. Everyone deserves high quality care in this province. Mm. And what do you want to say about the increase in the portables in the schools uh, as being promised during the elections they were supposed to go, but with the time they have been increasingly uh, like, but people are suffering from that too. Uh, like students or the children, they have been uh, for whole their life, they have been uh, like studying in the portables and then getting off from the schools. They won't even get into the buildings. Yeah. So that's kind of another big issue. The children's, what kind of society we are bringing up, what's going to be their future. Uh, that's uh, again, that's going to be in their mind for whole of their lives. They've never been to school, studied all the time in portables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's uh, in this uh, budget, we have a $4.2 billion capital budget to build schools. Uh, we're expanding schools, 13,600 additional spaces for students in Surrey alone mm -hmm. under our government. Under the previous government, one school expansion. So the, between the growth of the population and the historic underfunding of the, the Surrey School Board, uh, there are too many portables. No student should be going to school in a portable. But uh, we've got the construction underway to expand dramatically the number of schools, and not just in Surrey, right up the valley, because we're seeing this population growth right up the valley as well. And it's not just the physical uh, a school that's important. It's the experience that students have in the school. Mm -hmm. So we put in place a breakfast program right across the province so that no kid is going to school uh, without starting the day with some food uh, so that they aren't hungry uh, throughout the day. We have a screening program for kindergarten through grade two for reading so that kids who are struggling with reading, we're identifying them early and additional training for teachers to be able to support those kids with interventions so that by the time they get to grade five, six, and seven, they've addressed those reading and writing issues and they're gonna be successful in school. Mm. We're putting in place the pieces so that our kids can be successful in our schools. Mm -hmm. And we're also addressing their safety issues online with cell phones. Uh, we have a table with all the social media companies to address exploitation and bullying of kids online through social media apps. Um, where the kids are actually um, facing danger in our communities uh, because of a lack of action from previous uh, administrations. So we're doing all of these things uh, because it's not just the school building, which we're working on, but it's what happens inside the school as well. Hmm. Yes. And again with that, how do you see Soji? Uh, because so many protests even going on, uh, the people at big number, the gatherings at some places now, uh, like they are chanting against the government regarding this Soji. And have you ever addressed them or tried to talk to them and try to resolve the issues? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I just think, you know, I, I've got kids uh, in school myself. I've mm -hmm. got a, a nine-year-old and a four-year-old who's starting school in September, big yeah. kids' school. She's very excited. But, you know, any parent knows the kid comes home from school and you say, how is school today? Your mother yourself, yourself was a teacher. Yeah, that's school. right. Then absolutely. She was principal, huh? Yeah, that's right. And so... Um, you know, the kid comes home from school and you're like, how is school today? And they're like, fine. And you don't know what happened at school. Hmm. Uh, a lot of parents are seeing uh, misinformation from people about what's happening at our schools. And I just encourage those parents, call the teacher. Reach out to the teacher uh, and ask, you know, I heard this is happening in the classroom. I heard this is how you're, I heard you're using this book or this tool or whatever it is. What are you doing in the class? What are you teaching my kids? Uh, because I think that will solve so many problems is just to talk to the teacher. I do think that there are people who are using this issue mm -hmm. uh, as a tool to try to gain political power. Um, there was a recall campaign about our education minister, uh, and it was a disaster. They got hardly any signatures because uh, I think people understand um, when someone is trying to uh, take advantage, especially new arrivals to British Columbia. They don't know the school system. They might not know the language. Someone says, this is what happens in schools. They're like, okay, well, maybe this is what happens in schools. So you uh, think it's the language barrier? 
I think it's a language barrier. I think it's new arrivals. And I think it's unscrupulous politicians uh, that are trying to gain power and influence within certain cultural groups by telling them things that are happening in schools that are just not true. Mm. We had to actually uh, put a rule in place uh, to establish a 20 meter barrier around schools to make mm -hmm. sure kids and teachers were safe at schools because some people were so upset about what they thought was happening in the schools that they were banging on windows. They were going in to yell at teachers and principals and it wasn't safe for kids. Just like during COVID, we had people blocking the doors to hospitals because they thought that COVID was a big conspiracy. So we have to make sure that parents are comfortable. Go mm -hmm. talk to the teacher, start that conversation. Um, and uh, for those who are uh, uh, deciding to threaten teachers or thinking that banging out school windows or threatening teachers is a good way to address the issue, we have to put laws in place to make sure that kids are safe at school. And for, uh, for anyone that has questions, again, I just encourage them to talk to the teachers of their kids because mm -hmm. uh, some of what I've heard is absolutely outrageous and it's just not true. Yeah, Premier, many more things to be asked, but time isn't allowing me. And uh, thank you so much for coming to Prime Asia once again. And we're looking forward. And we uh, hope that whenever the next time we come, uh, we're going to have more questions and more chairs regarding this. Thank you so much for coming to studio this time. You bet. Thanks thank so much you, for having me. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So, it's inside now, uh, Mr. David A.P., Premier of British Columbia, is the program that we're in. I'm the director of Prime Asia TV. Thought up now. Thought daily.